second, let's take a look at absolute value equations. Now, I'm not sure if you've ever seen the absolute value function defined as this piecewise function, and it looks weird, but let's just chat about it. So what this is saying is when you see this symbol, absolute value of x, if the number inside that grouping symbol or the number inside those absolute values, if it's positive, keep it positive. All right, so if x is positive, just return x. But if the number inside here, if x is negative, meaning it's less than zero, then give me the opposite sign of that number. So here's what I mean. Let's see if we were gonna try the absolute value of two, all right? So I think you can see that for this particular example, x is being played by two, right? The number inside those grouping symbols is two. Let me erase that, I already put so much scribbling on it. Okay, now, is two greater than or equal to zero or is two less than zero? And I think you'll give me two is greater than or equal to zero. So this, this says just write the number two. Okay, great. Now, let's say I have the absolute value of negative two. All right, now this time, the number inside my absolute values is negative two. Is negative two greater than or equal to zero? Or is negative two less than zero? Well, this time we're on the bottom part, right? Um, negative two is less than zero. So it says write the opposite of that number. So give me a negative of negative two, and we know the negative of negative two is positive two. So that's a way to define the absolute value function, and we call this a piecewise function. We will talk more about piecewise functions at a later section. I just wanted you to see it right now. All right, so the absolute value of a number, x, gives the distance from that point, that value, excuse me, to zero on a number line. We don't care if it's left or right of zero, we just care about the distance from zero. So for real numbers a and b, an equation of the form absolute value of a is equal to b, as long as b is positive, we'll have a solution where a equals b or negative b. Now, if the number on the right side of the equation is less than zero, you're gonna have no answer. So there's no way for an absolute value to equal something negative. And that'll, that'll pop itself up. So if we have an absolute value equation, and I really wanna stress the phrase equation, right, or the word equation, because when we get into section 2.7, we're gonna have an inequality. But if you have an equal sign, you're gonna have a couple things play out. If the number on the right side of the equation is negative, there's no solutions, okay? If the number on the right side of the equation actually equals zero, you have exactly one solution. And the most common option is when the number on the right side of the equation is positive and you have two solutions. So this is going to be the most common option. It won't happen all the time, obviously. There's two other options floating around, but this is the most common one. So when you get your absolute values, and you have an equal sign, you're going to set up two equations. You're gonna set up the a equaling b and a equaling negative b. So this is going to be the method for how you solve an absolute value equation. And that will change in 2.7 when we get the less than version and the greater than version. All right, so with that, let's take a look at how we solve these. All right, so let me scooch this up a bit. And then we're gonna take a look at example five. So take note, I have an absolute value expression and then I have an equal sign. Okay, now my absolute value is isolated. That's great, that's always the first thing you wanna do. Isolate the absolute value. So again, isolate absolute value in the same way that we wanted to isolate the radical before. So you always wanna isolate this, this thing that you're talking about. Now when you have the equal sign, here's the method you let whatever is inside that grouping symbol and whatever is inside that absolute value, you set it equal to seven and you set it equal to negative seven, right? We're gonna let a equal b and a equal negative b. So seven or negative seven, those are gonna be your two options. Now when I solve this, right, if I, if I manipulate this a little bit, I'm gonna get negative four x is equal to negative two, which will give me x equaling positive one half. Here I'm gonna get negative four x is equal to negative 16, and I'm gonna wind up with x equaling positive four. All right, now I'm gonna scooch this up a bit so we can start checking these answers. And I would recommend that you check them just to make sure it's, it's working. All right, let's try this. If x is gonna be one half, four times a half is two. Nine minus two is seven. The absolute value of seven is seven. That one worked. Let's try it here, x is four. Four times four is 16. 
9 minus 16 is negative 7. But the absolute value of negative 7 is still 7. So that works as well. So we're getting two answers here, x equaling 1 half and x equaling 4. Okay. So again, the technique, when you have the equal sign, you're going to set up two equations. It's going to be equal to whatever the value on the right side of the equation was and the opposite of that symbol or of that number. So same thing here, absolute value, I've got an equal sign and I've got a number. This is already isolated, right? I've isolated my absolute value. So I'm going to get either 3x plus 2 is equal to 8 or 3x plus 2 is equal to negative 8. Absolute value symbol, equation, here's my mechanics, right? And start to compartmentalize this because when we get into section 2.7, you're going to pick up two different sets of mechanics for when you have the less than symbol here and when you have the greater than symbol. So if I solve this, it looks like I have 3x equaling 6. I'm going to see x equaling 2 on this side. Here I'm going to get 3x is equal to negative 10. x is going to be negative 10 thirds. Let's just check all of those, make sure we believe it. All right, 3 times 2 is 6, 6 plus 2 is 8. The absolute value of 8 is 8. All right, 3 times negative 10 thirds. If I were to take this number and multiply it by 3, right, I'm going to have negative 10 because that numerator and denominator would cancel. All right, so 3 times negative 10 thirds is negative 10. Negative 10 plus 2 is negative 8. The absolute value of negative 8 is still 8, so this checks out as well. All right, so where have we been so far? Because we still have a few more examples. We still have C through F to take a look at. Both of the examples that we've done in A and B, we've had this, this option here, right? The number on the right side of the equation has been positive because 7 is greater than 0 and 8 is greater than 0. All right, we're going to look at four more examples and I'm going to mix it up between the three of these options. But again, isolate the absolute value, all right? And then if you have the equal sign, set it equal to the, that number that's on the right side of the equation and the opposite, right? Number that's on the right side of the equation and its opposite. That's the mechanics when you have absolute value equations. All right, so let's flip the page and practice some more. I'll see you in a few. Bye. Okay, let's keep going with example five. So again, I take a look, I have an absolute value expression here on the left side and I have an equal sign. All right, so with that, I'm gonna isolate the absolute value, which, which it already is in this case. And then because of the equal sign, the mechanics are to set four minus x equal to 10 or four minus, excuse me, four minus six, four x minus six equal to 10 or four x minus six equal to negative 10. So I'm setting up, two equations, right? They're both going to be 10 units from the origin, just in either direction. And that's what the absolute value is talking about, distance from the origin. So when I simplify this a little bit, I'm going to have 4x is equal to 16. x will be equal to 4 on this side. Here I will have 4x is equal to negative 4. x should be negative 1. And you can always plug these back into the original equation to see that they hold true but they do, so I'm gonna have two solutions here, okay? Now, if I look at D, it's pretty similar, right? I've got an absolute value expression on the left side and it's isolated, so that's great. But take a look here. I have a negative number on this side. So perhaps you recognize on site that something's up with this, but let's say you didn't. I just wanna go over the, you, you're strolling along, you see the absolute value signs and you see the equal sign. And you're like, okay, you know what? I'm going to set up my two equations. And then you're going to solve these, right? The same way we did before. And you're still going to get negative one and four. But if you plugged back in to check, I want you to see what would happen here. So let's say I plugged negative one in. Four times negative one is negative four. Negative four minus six is negative 10. The absolute value of negative 10 is positive 10, and that is not equal to negative 10. That is not a solution. So let's try four. Four times four is 16. 16 minus six is 10. The absolute value of 10 is 10. That is not equal to negative 10. So if you tried to plug both of those numbers back in, they would both fail. And again, you can go through those mechanics and check your solutions, that will work. But I think it's easier to just recognize that absolute values are never negative, right? So let's just write this down. 
absolute values are never negative, right? So just out the gate, I could tell there was no solution to this. And if you can recognize that, you save yourself a little bit of time, right? I don't need to go through all of this shenanigans. I just say, oh, thanks for playing, but that's not gonna give me any answers. And if we look back on the previous page, we said right here, if that number on the left side of the equation is less than zero and negative 10 is less than zero, then this absolute value equation has no solution. All right, so yes, that's not a very common option, but it is an option. And we saw it in example 5D. All right, let me scooch the page up and let's see what else we have happen in here. Let me get this up so that we have some space to work on these problems. Okay, so for example 5E, I have an absolute value symbol, right? And then I have an equal sign, but my absolute value is not isolated. So again, I need to isolate the absolute value first. All right, and it's going to give us a very different answer. I, I'm worried that some of you would do this. You'd say, well, five minus eight X plus six equals 14, or five minus eight X plus six equals negative 14. And if you go right into, well, I had an absolute value expression and I had an equal sign, so I'll just do 14 and negative 14. That's not technically the rule. So let me go back to it, right? All of this works when the absolute value is isolated, all right? So there's not anything else on the left side of this equation, just the absolute value. That's when you can say it's equal to B or negative B. But before that happens, right, before you can use that property, you've got to isolate the absolute value equation. So this is incorrect. You need to isolate the absolute value expression first and then create your two equations. All right. So as we work through this, I'm going to subtract the 6 first. And I will get that the absolute value of 5 minus 8x is equal to 8. And then I can use that, that mechanic, so that methodology we've been talking about. So 5 minus 8x will equal 8, or 5 minus 8x will be equal to negative 8. Okay? So then when I solve this, I'm looking at what negative, oh, I'll move it this way, 8x will be equal to negative 3. And you guys were probably thinking, oh, I'll subtract the 5 over. You totally can. You're more than welcome to. I've just mentioned frequently at this point that I really like positively coefficients. So I moved the negative 8x to the right side of the equation. I subtracted 8 over here and 5 minus 8 is negative 3. I just wrote them in the flip-flopped order because I like my variables on the left. Either way, we should be getting to x being equal to negative 3 eighths. And if I do that over here, right, I move the 8x to this side, this will be a 13 here. I'm going to divide both sides by 8, so I'm going to get x equaling 13 eighths here. So for this problem, I have two solutions, right, negative 3 eighths, oops, let me write x is equal to. So x is equal to negative 3 eighths or 13 eighths. And you can plug these into this original equation, see that they work, and then you're good to go. All right. Over here, I've got my absolute value symbol. It's isolated and it's equal to zero. And you might say, all right, let's do it. Seven plus, excuse me, seven X plus 28 equals zero, or seven X plus 28 is equal to negative zero. But negative zero is just zero. So these become redundant and you only have the one equation that you need to solve, which is awesome. So here, I'll subtract 28. I'm going to get 7x is equal to negative 28, which ultimately means x is equal to negative 4. And if I plug that in, well, 7 times negative 4 is negative 28. 28 plus 28 is 0. The absolute value of 0 is 0. And there is my one solution. So if we refer back to those, those three cases that were here, right, in, in that last box that we were looking at, right, Again, the most common option is when you just have a positive number on the right side of the equation, you get two solutions. But here, we finally, we had zero on the right side of our equation this time, and we only popped out one solution. So while this isn't as common an option, it does happen. 
So when you're dealing with the absolute values and you have the equal sign, again, the most common option is that you'll have a positive number on the right side and that'll give you two answers. There's gonna be times where you have a negative number on the right side of that, that absolute value expression. And if you can recognize that, you can just jump right to, I have no solution. And we saw that in example 5D, right? And then if you have the right side of your equation equaling zero, you're only gonna have that one solution. And we saw that in example 5F. So you've seen all of these options played out. Again, this third option played out the most often, but I did give examples where the other two were happening. All right, so we've got how to handle absolute value expressions with an equal sign. And now we're gonna move on to equations in quadratic form. So I'll see you in a few, bye.